I'm in Tolosa in the Basque region and we're about to go to Casa Julien for the steak. So uh, let's see how this goes. These are the charred leeks. These are like the nicest looking leeks I've ever seen. And there's the cotton peppers. Well, we have just finished our meal at Casa Julien. I've got a lot of meat inside me right now. I've had a lot of meat <laughs> for, for one person. When he said, um, oh, is, uh, what would you both like? And I said, well, Steph's vegetarian. And uh, they kind of looked at us and I said, but don't worry, I can eat a lot of meat. And well, that's exactly what I did. Probably too much meat, which is why I've got a buzz right now. I'm probably gonna collapse and roll over and float down this river on the way home. Who knows? But how do I summarize a meal like that? Well, first of all, we put, I didn't do much filming. I put my phone down. I kind of put the GoPro down because as soon as I was in there, I realized actually how important the ambience of the restaurant is. And I know it's quite a poncy thing to say, but when you sit in there and you look at the ceiling where the, the paint's flaking off, the old dusty bottles around you and these hard bench tables that you sit on, you'd probably think this isn't going to be quite a nice, comfortable experience, but that simple basic stuff they have in the restaurant means that you kind of draw your attention straight away to the flame and it's at the flame where all the action takes place and the grill guy just stands there and he flicks the meat he slaps the meat he cuts the meat and flames spit out occasionally you hear the sizzle of the fat going and you're just taken back by it all it's almost like staring at the fireplace and it's quite a it's quite what would you say? It's quite a calm experience. Yeah. Quite so you don't really it? want to start like getting your phone out and doing the whole, you know, I'm a food blogger thing. So what I would say is if we talk about taste and flavor, then the beef itself has this mature, strong flavor that you get from an old dairy cow, six, seven years old. And I believe they're only dry aged for about 15 days, which goes against the grain of what most people would do, particularly in London. So what you get is this aged beef, which isn't dry aged for long, which means it's juicy, but it's got that mature flavor. And they actually cook it. Very similar to how me and Kieran have often cooked big chunks of meat like that. We kind of cook it indirect, raised away from the flame, but they have it tilted. And then just at the end, they move it back and start getting the char on it. So it's almost like a reverse sear that they do on the steak. And that for me is the perfect way to cook it because what you're getting is a really, slowly melted down breaking down the fat to put in flavor into the meat and then at the end adding that charred flavor with the flames of the fire just licking the meat so <sighs> lovely i could just talk for ages about the meat but actually the desserts are well worth a shout and that's definitely steph's speciality so favorite dessert steph oh, probably the cheesecake we have yeah. found 
We have found a best cheesecake that we like. That is a cheesecake. <laughs> That's a cheesecake. It tastes Not like a cheesecake. Place. That is a cheesecake. That is a proper cheesecake. And you could really taste the cheese in it. Yeah. And it had a base. The, the flavour was strong, it was actually. It was a really strong flavour. And it, it was, he told us there was gorgonzola cheese in it. And what was the other cheese? I've, I've forgotten already. I'm not sure. But you could taste cheese, couldn't you? Yeah. And the base of it was made up from the cigarettes and tiles dish that they do, which we also got as well. That's which the is a, like biscuits. Almost like um, twilled sort of biscuit type things that they'd made with orange in. Really nice. And then we had this... Um, Basque, Basque, chocolate Basque pie. Chocolate Basque pie, which was just really thick, really rich, really sweet. And for Steph, just perfect. For me, probably too much after all that fat <laughs> on, on, the, on the meat, but what a, what a plate of food. Yeah. And, and all um, the accompaniments that we had with it. And we had coffee too at the end, and we had the best table in the restaurant as well. I don't know how, but we managed to get the best table in the restaurant. So yeah, very grateful. And. Um, and for somebody who wasn't eating the meat, it was a great experience. Yeah, even for stuff. so many nice things. Yeah. Uh, the asparagus, white asparagus, the grilled charred leeks were so nice, and the peppers. Yeah, there's dishes there I'm definitely going to incorporate into what I do from going forward. And also, our friends at Pippa and Harry had come here, uh, I think last winter or last summer. And I remember them telling me, I remember them saying, Mike, we've found this restaurant that's you. This is this is you. If you had a place, it would probably be like this. And this is a place you need to go and eat. And I messaged them this morning, actually last night, and I said, is it Casa Julian by any chance? And like, yes, that's exactly where it is. So I'm pleased I did it because they know what they're on about. And I'm, I'm pleased. I'm pleased it was the same place because I've, I've got fond memories of it too now. So. So for me, the Basque region, if I could sum it up, it's unpretentious. It's not trying to be anything it's not. It pushes away people who like fancy things. People who like simple things done very, very well are the sort of people that would find themselves lost in the Basque. And that's exactly what we've found. And that's why we've named our van Basco, because this is a place that really speaks to us. I mean, look, we're just, we've got hills mountains rivers it's got everything for us so yeah the bass region yeah we love it yeah it's one of my top food spots right now get yourselves out here it's brilliant i'll see you soon <laughs>